Hi, my name's Toby Mountjoy, and this is The Autism Show. Hi, so we're episode 11. This week we're going to continue to explore what parents face and how they're confronted with the kinds of challenges after their children are diagnosed with autism. We're going to be talking to a parent about their own particular journey and experience. We took some time to talk to Tyrus' mum and ask her some questions about her experiences. Tara, thank you for joining us today. Happy to do so. So he's seven now. And as he began to develop, at some point you must have started to notice some signs that his development was maybe different than you would expect. What were some of the first things that you noticed? When he can't pronounce words properly. When we talk to him, he's babbling most of the uh, most of the time. Every time when he wants to call mommy, he keeps on saying nami nami. I kept on like uh, correcting him, but he wouldn't correct himself. And after two years, some words that he can say, like maybe four or five words, it decreases. So from there, I was like, oh, like what's going on? So, but I didn't know about autism. Right. So we were like, okay, maybe he's a, he's a bit slow, like he's taking his time. And when he's almost turning three, we decided to find a play school for him. I tried to put Tyrese in a kindergarten and he did. Went for two days and then the principal uh, called me up and said, oh, can you come and uh, I need to talk to you. So and then she said that I think there's something wrong with your child because he's not doing what other kids is doing and he's not listening. So I got upset because like, why would you say that, right? But my husband kept saying like, I think there is something wrong. You know, we should check. But uh, maybe I'm still in denial. Okay. Yeah. So after a while, we did send him for diagnosis. He was diagnosed with uh, mild autism when I found out I knew that it's coming. In my mind, I can't accept it, so I was like crying. I wish there's something wrong with him, but from his behavior, there's so many warning signs. It sounds like you were trying to fight it somehow. Yeah, true. Sure, yeah. Right? Yeah. Because it's very threatening. You know, yeah, because I don't know what autism is before this, so yes. I, I never read about it. So I'm not aware about it. So what were some of the feelings that you were having around that time? Mostly uh, it's anxious, helpless as well, mm. because like I said, I don't know much about autism. I did some reading, you know, like a basic reading. Did you have any feelings about um, maybe being blamed? Like they would say like, oh, you're a bad mom. Not, not a bad time. mom, but I feel like did I did something wrong. Well, I was pregnant with him. Did I do something or did I eat something or I didn't eat something, <laughs> right? So like, I didn't know. Questioning yourself. Yeah. And so when you heard that, your heart must have sunk. Yeah, I, was, I, 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 I cried. Uh, it must have been devastating news, right? Yes, it there, hit there, me. There. It was confirmed, it hit me. So at that moment, uh, like, what, what was the trip back home like? After hearing that. It's uh, in my car calling my husband and he was like, oh, how was the assessment? How was the therapy? What, what did the therapist say? And I burst into this. I said, he has autism. And then my husband was like, I knew it. I knew it. He has autism. Okay. Because he's ready and he knows it, but he could convince me. I can't imagine what it was like to have to make that phone call. It was hard. Like when he asked, my heart just sank. Yeah. And I just burst. Well, Duffy was in Hong Kong all oh, along okay. for okay. three years, so I was in Malaysia. Oh. So we did talk afterwards. He's the planner, so he <laughs> makes all the plans. Okay, this is what you need to do. So we find him a therapist, put him a therapy, whatever therapy that he needs. So you were all by yourself in Malaysia the whole time? Yeah, I was with three kids. <laughs> Did you have uh, like your parents there to help or was uh, it really all yeah, you? Yeah, they, they were around. They were around my area as well. So what was their reaction, your family that was, who was in Malaysia when they heard that news? Or did you even tell them? I did. I did. I, did tell, uh, I told everyone. I said, okay, um, just letting everyone know that Tyrese has autism. And they were like, oh, okay, it's fine. It'll be fine. You just need to put him in the park that he needs to be, 
So I was relieved when I hear my family was saying that. Very even though they, yeah, even though they don't know what it is. So then again, back at that time when you, shortly after you received the diagnosis, you had to start thinking about the plan that your husband mentioned, right? Yeah. Uh, and so, what was it like to have to try to navigate that? It was a stressful time for me mm. because the planning was easy. Like, you know what you have to do, mm -hmm. but to find that solution is very hard yeah. because in Malaysia, they don't have school there. So it's only therapies and it's scattered everywhere in, mm -hmm. in Kuala Lumpur. Mm -hmm. So like to get one or even to get a good one, it takes forever. Okay. So I have to be like calling over and over again. It's like begging like, oh, do you have spot for my child? Do you have spots mm -hmm. for my child? So that was my problem yeah. being in Malaysia and not enough resources for my son. So it was really stressful for me and my husband as well because he does take toll on our uh, relationship as well. He was saying like, oh, you should do more, you should do more because he doesn't have much time with Tyrese like I do. So that's why he's like, find more school, find, find more places. So that I've been finding, I've been trying. Like, I've been calling. So oh, then we should be doing something else if it's not working. I've already made up my mind. I, was just, um, I told my husband, if I can't find him in school, I'll homeschool him. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to do <laughs> after six interviews. And so the stress that you were experiencing at that time, did that... Uh, or maybe you could describe some of the ways that that impacted you. My stress was more of like um, towards myself. I'm like, um, like thinking like, oh, what should I do more? Like, and I feel like I'm so focused on Tyrese that I don't have much time with the, the other two older ones. Mm. So it makes me feel sad as well. Yeah. And then like, because my husband is not in Malaysia, so being in Malaysia with three kids, with Tyrese diagnosed with autism, and try to find a good therapist for him, mm. I was all over the place. Mm -hmm. And I kept on calling people, I kept on crying. Even my mom, she was like, oh, you know, like uh, maybe you should like uh, take a break. I said, I can't, if I take a break, yeah, it's it, will not it will impact Tyrese, he needs, he needs, therapy as soon as possible. Yeah. So, uh, with your husband not in the same city, how did this all affect your relationship? At one point, I feel frustrated because he's not with me to help Tyrese because Tyrese is so close to him, he needs his dad. Yeah. My husband tried to, like, every week, he tries to fly his in every week okay. on Friday night and then leave on Monday morning. Okay. So we've been doing that for two years. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So every time when he leaves, Tyrese become aggressive. So we were thinking, ah, uh, this is not good. So after that two years, that's when uh, my husband decided, okay, I think we should move back to Hong Kong. So it sounds like you were also overwhelmed by the mountain that you have to climb yeah. to try to make all this happen. Yeah. And meanwhile. You feel like you're neglecting your other children. You yes. don't have time for them. Yeah, it's true. Can you think of any times that sort of stood out to you? Maybe something that one of your other children said or did that triggered that feeling like, oh man, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not able to be a uh, mom to everybody all at once. I just, it's too much for me. Yeah, it happened a few times. It's always like, oh, you have to give in to Tyrese, please, because he doesn't understand it. So, and that triggers anger as well and sadness in that they'll be like, oh, why do I have to give in to Tyrese? Mm. So I have to explain to them, mm. like over and over again, I have to make sure my, both of my older kids understand him. I have to give him a priority mm. at the time being. There's even one time I was so busy with Tyrese and I forgot to pick up my two kids in school. Oh, no. <laughs> so then it's going to call us, oh, I'm so sorry, I totally <laughs> forgot. And twice it happened because I was, I was so focused on Tyrese, on doing his therapies and looking for... You yeah. have to juggle so much that it's yeah, inevitable that yeah. something drops, right? Yeah. 
thank you very much for sharing. You're welcome. Thanks very much for watching today. I hope that was uh, great information to hear from a parent's perspective, and we'll see you next time.